Hey everybody, I'm Hugh Brownstone for Planet 5D and I'm delighted to be bringing this review to you from Philly Photo Studio in Northern Liberties, Philadelphia. Although I can't stand, the, I can't stand the leaf blowers. <laughs> Anyway, Hugh Brownstone, Planet 5D, welcome to a walk-off. If those uh, of you out there have not seen Zoolander, I highly recommend it. The reference is to the movie Zoolander, a walk-off between Hansel, who's so hot right now, and Derek Zoolander. Today's walk-off is between the Movi M5 3-axis gimbal and the Came 7800, the Came TV 7800 3-axis gimbal as well. I'm delighted once again to have with me Mike Greenberg. Howdy, how's it going, Hugh? Except for the leaf blowers, it's going <laughs> fine. And uh, I brought Mike in. Uh, he is one of two uh, gimbal experts that we have. The other is Sophie Parker. You may have seen her in the test footage we did with the uh, 7800 a while back. Mike is actually a movie operator, so he knows whereof he speaks. I thought it would be great to have Mike in today. What we're going to do is we're going to balance Little Rebel SL1 with their STM 10 to 18 millimeter zoom, tack sharp zoom, really surprising. You wouldn't think so, but this is a great combination. First on the Movi M5 and then on the 7800. So without further ado, Mike, would you do the honors? Sure. And uh, running commentary as you feel uh, moved to do so. All right. Uh... So I had a brief chance to play with the KM right before we set up so I could get familiar with it because it wouldn't be fair otherwise as I've been using the Movi for almost a year now. And uh, I think there's a lot of cool features on it and there's a lot of cool features on the Movi and it's picking and choosing what features you need for your productions that will really help you out. I think one of the things that we're all really interested in is the difference in price and the nature of trade-offs for that price. So what's the latest uh, price on the Movi M5? I think it's clocking in around four grand, if I'm not mistaken. I think you're right. I think I saw that, 39.99 or something like this. The Came uh, TV 7800 clocks in just under $1,400. So huge difference, almost one third the price. Question is, what trade-offs are you making for that incredible price reduction? And do you know the max weight you can hold on the Came? What I know is that the 7800 is designed to uh, handle cameras like the Rebel SL1, the Canon 5D Mark II, the Sony A7S in particular, the Panasonic GH4. Okay. So it's that weight class. So and it's the same it's, weight class for both gimbals. Yeah, exactly. And I think it's in the neighborhood of three kilograms. Okay. Does that sound right? Yeah. That sounds right. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Use pounds. 6.6 .6 pounds. <laughs> yeah, 6.6 .6 pounds. Cool, so we got the base plate on there. Uh, pull this out. Pop it on. Okay. I often leave it set up with my favorite camera on there. So this is a real test because yeah. he has not balanced the SL1 on this uh, gimbal anytime recently. And it's funny because it's a very light camera compared to other ones. Oh yeah. So one you of the notice reasons. the slightest difference. Yeah, one of the reasons why I swapped down from the 5D Mark II to a pair of Rebel SL ones. So there are a couple of axes that you have to balance this on. Front yep. back. Front and side back is first. Side. And mm -hmm. then side to side. And underneath here so this center lever gets you fore and aft, and then your side to side are the two right here. And I just pop those loose and slide it. And it's not perfect, but I'm getting close. Okay, is it good enough so that if you flip it on, the Movi will uh, right itself? Not yet, we got a couple more. Okay. So now you want to check up and down. Let me see, we're a little bottom heavy. Let me go up higher. And one thing to note is the Movi has a full cage, and you can top in or tap into your uh, your hot shoe mount if you want. 
I don't really find it a big deal. Some people claim it is. Uh, it just gives you a little more rigidity, but I'm okay without it. I'm just gonna bring it a little forward. So we're pretty close. And then you wanna check. If this was going one way or the other, pop these two loose, slide it Very back. Very nice. Very nice. Very easy. So, I mean, it's a light camera, so it's staying with me. It's a little off now. I'll bring it back to where it was. Maybe. So the battery's in its cage. It's got a little uh, connector right there. Flip it on. Give it a second to boot up. So That's it's, always it's, so cool. It's always so so cool. it's really unhappy with this weight. So I need to grab the computer and dial it back the settings. You hear that? You feel it? Feel the vibrated vibrations? I heard it. Yes. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. couple clicks reduce the pan stiffness and I should be good to go great and then you just click write settings and over Bluetooth it writes it back so the next time I boot this up it will save those settings and uh, we're ready great. to so, shoot. So for those of you who don't know Majestic Mode just a way of quick explanation it's kind of like a slow follow for yeah, the it's operator. A, it's a single operator and you can control the parameters from the computer about how fast you're going but when I pan, it pans with a little delay. When I tilt, tilt with a longer delay, that's my preference. But you can set the angle of the window before it starts that movement. Nice. And you can also set uh, a little bit of shake if you want it to feel a little more organic. Can you also set it so that, let's say, the uh, majestic mode works in pan only or tilt only? You can set it that the uh, pan is majestic and the tilt is locked. But I'm not sure that there's a way to lock the pan and not the tilt. Gotcha. Okay. So there you have it. That's what it takes to get the Movi M5 balanced with our target uh, setup, the Canon Rebel SL1 with the STM 10 to 18 millimeter lens. And now we're going to do the same thing with the Kane TV 7800. So let's swap places. Cool. So we switched the base plate off. The Movi base plate is done. I uh, got the base plate from the Kame on here. And uh, one thing I really like about pretty much everywhere on the Kame is you got markings. And that's a shortcoming of the Movi. So you can say, oh, I know this camera balances at two and a half inches and line it up. Nice. And it's every time. So once you get used to the setups that you use. Repeatability. Yeah, it's nice. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing. Now the downside is not all of it is toolless. So your fore and aft is. Uh, you got a, pin, a safety pin up front, and you can lock your fore and aft really quickly, right in there. Now that we've got the fore and aft somewhat close, it's really not on there, I want to at least dial in the other settings to get, Good. To get where we need to be. So I'm going to loosen this back up, slide back. When we were doing the initial build, it took two of us working with the stand supplied by Kame TV to get it going. We had to remove the uh, monitor holder in order to have the Kame TV sit properly in the stand. That was just a weird design in general. Uh... But also when you come out of the box, these pins right here are loosened as well as the ones right here. So we can lie flat and travel in a small container. Getting those set up was not easy. It took us nearly an hour for the initial setup. Right. One thing that they could do that would be great was add a couple bubble levels here. I would lock these in and make sure they're perfectly perpendicular and then get a bigger case and leave it in there. Once these are set up, your time is negligible to adjust. Movi can do the same thing as far as levels are concerned, but the difference of a toolless setup versus hex allen is significant during that initial build. And it depends on what you're doing. If 
If you're a one-man band and you can leave a camera on here more often than not, or you, sh you know the lenses you're going to be on, it might not be a big deal to take an extra 15 minutes to set up be between setups. Uh, for other people, that's that's a big no-no because they need to be on set and they have pe a whole crew waiting on them. And that's you know one of the drawbacks of a steady cam is how long it takes to balance. I'm still a little bottom heavy here, so I'm gonna keep I can you see coming that. up. And the hex keys, they do take a little bit of effort to adjust. So your fore and aft was very easy to adjust. Right. But your top and bottom, not so much. I don't know if you guys can see this, but one of the issues is that you have to adjust each of four hex screws, two on each side, and just inch it up or millimeter it up on either side. And there's nothing locking it on one side or the other. So this side can stay while this one goes down. Right. And that's exactly. So it'd be easier if you could keep it loose and adjust it. But if you... so, in other words, if the uh, bottom plate were really locked in, so that even if the other side were loose, it would stay at that exact 90 degree angle. Yeah, something to keep them at the locked at the same height mm -hmm. would help. So we're pretty good. Let's check here. Uh, a little off there. So there's four pins on the ones that you do have to adjust. So the point being that it's not just four aft side to side, it's also moving the entire assembly forward underneath the crossbar for the handles. And I have to say, looking at the purpose-built tool you have there, versus one of these guys. Mm -hmm. Definitely better to have a single uh, sized driver. Yeah, it's great. It's, it's faster. It, it was easier to move this without the camera on there. That's the weight it was at. So right now you see the joystick is controlling it and it's also got Majestic off. So if you give it one tap, you can hear it execute that. Now we're in Majestic, both directions. And so, you can still use the joystick. Right, so it's Majestic one click, it's Majestic pan and tilt. And let's give it two clicks and see what that was. So now it looks like the tilt is locked and we're still panning. Right. And give it three clicks. And I think we're locked in all directions, right? Yep. So we got, now it's only joystick, which is cool. Yeah, very nice. It's nice to have those options. It's nice how easily you can switch between them. So there you have it, a not so quick exploration of what it takes to balance a camera on the Movi versus the Kane TV 7800. Uh, and we're going to take these outside so we can get some footage. But what thoughts do we have now that you've had a chance to work with this a little bit, Mike? Well, I'm curious to see how these compare when we get the footage back. You know, there's points on here where you can feel the difference in the movement. And it's very subtle. It's a very good movement. But you can feel when you come back certain ways that you're not quite sure. You can feel the weight shift. And I'm curious to see if that translates on screen. All right, let's do it. We'll be back in a little bit. No monitor. We could have had a monitor. I had a monitor. You we, didn't ask for a monitor. But let's, let's take a look let's at make the footage. Sure we got something good in there. Okay. You like that? Oh, you did that with a uh, touch screen with a glove. What do you think? So far, I'm pretty impressed. Very nice. Yeah, so I'm running. You can see a little bounce because I had it in briefcase mode and I was jumping up and down because there's snow and I couldn't 
have yeah, this. You amazing. almost lost it. You <laughs> almost <laughs> lost it. That was really and funny. And you didn't. I think there's a couple of points where I almost fell, and you didn't really notice that on here. So. Wow. All in all, pretty impressive. Now that we've seen this, shall we mount up on the M5 and see what happens? Yeah, let's go. Yes, you're going to be a star. Yeah, go ahead. If you can run, I'll run with you. I was <laughs> That's crazy. It's slick out there. It's I'll pretty slick. Much. It's pretty slick. So you've had a chance to play with both gimbals. What do you think? Uh, I think by the time you get them set up, they're pretty similar. Pretty impressed. Two gimbals, two very different price points, a set of legitimate trade-offs is, I guess, how I would describe it. Yeah. With the Movi, uh, you are getting some real sophistication. Bluetooth connectivity for software tuning. You've got the toolless um, balancing, and it really makes a difference. There's no question. And you got about a lot it. of customer care and support to back you up because it's so computerized. There could be a lot of issues that come up, and that's something that I find is a big selling point when you're in high pressure situations. Makes perfect sense. And on the flip side, if you're a one man band and you've got the same camera each and every time, you're not yet at the point where your clients are paying you enough so that the gimbal pays for itself when it costs four grand, five grand, or whatever, then the Kane TV 7800 is a very, very interesting and legitimate alternative. I'd love to see the Kane and the Ronin go head to head because they're even closer in price points. I want to see if there's a difference there. Well, Mike, thanks again for joining us. Thank Always you for a pleasure. Me. My pleasure. And guys, until next time, Hugh Brownstone for Planet 5D. See you soon.